staying up to the top. Before we get started on this video, you guys are enjoying this channel and you haven't subscribed yet? What is wrong with you? <laughs> Seriously guys, I take an unbelievable amount of time to video record, edit, and publish these videos. Now let's get into the rest of this video and put the cultivator to work. Let's do it. Where's that real big? You grab that one too. Okay, so the location for today's test is in a new housing development that's going in. A lot of construction going on, a lot of uneven soil and debris. So we're gonna test this thing. We're gonna see how it does. Now, please keep in mind, this is my very first time using this brand new attachment. Hardly anyone in the world has even seen this thing, let alone used it. So I'm sure that there are things that I could do better, things that I could learn, and ways I could improve. So I'm gonna take some time to thank the people who made this video possible. First is Jim Martin, who's a sales rep out of Power Pro, Todd Lewis, Ventrac sales trainer out of the corporate office in Oroville, Ohio, and Conrad Stoner, who is there to help me with some of the roving camera and close-up camera work. We'll do one right beside here and then right come here. back and split it down the middle and see what it looks like with two passes. Yeah, that's what I'd be curious about too. What's wrong with this one? All the power to you.
Okay, so I had a really beautiful surface. Bring that big boy up here. <laughs> Let's do it. Where's that real big? You can grab that one too. I need to know what this thing can do. Yeah, well, that's gonna, that's a little bigger than a group. Aaron, when he made that video, he put a bunch of tiny little rocks on our, <laughs> he and Mark, I said, are you guys kidding me? I... Now in this pass, we're going over the prepared surface that I made with the power rate to see if there's any difference. on my machine. Here I'm making some adjustments to the soil leveler, just doing some experimentation to see which gives the best finished result.
stuff like that.
my take on this after the first couple passes is yes it can bury rocks up to grapefruit size however you have to make sure that you're cutting at a depth that's at least the depth of the height of the rock if that makes any sense in some of the testing in the first couple passes i was noticing that when only fluffing up say the top inch any rocks that were larger than that would kind of get drug across the surface kind of like moraine in a glacier and it just kind of pulls it along and leaves grooves and ruts the downside to that is if you're uh cutting up or cultivating the maximum depth which i'm not even sure what that is i didn't get a good look at the gauge on the side i should have paid a little more attention to that but when you're cutting say six inches in depth we'll say that is a lot of loose material on the surface and that is extremely prone to washouts and erosion so i'm looking through the parts manual right now and i'm not sure if this is the final version but i'm guessing the manually adjustable portion of the cultivator is what I guess they would call the soil leveler. So you have the tines that are spinning around like a tiller and it's pushing the soil forward past a series of vertically arranged bars like a rake that allows the soil to pass through larger debris gets pushed to the bottom and that soil gets pushed into the soil leveler. Well I was messing around with adjustments, messing around with the lowest adjustment, the highest adjustment and some things in the mid-range trying to figure out what works best. Because my goal, naturally, is to achieve the smoothest, most level surface possible. And you'll notice in some of these clips that as the roller passes over and leaves that texture on the surface, any areas that do not have the texture are low spots. And I personally cannot have that in a finished product. So that's why I took my own tractor and a power rake and did some side-by-side -side comparisons to see if possibly some site prep before using the cultivator was necessary. What I found was site prep with the power rake before the cultivator didn't seem to make a whole lot of difference, but rather using the cultivator first to fluff up the soil and put the rocks down underneath, then follow up with the power rake to fully grade and polish the surface. Because we didn't have the primary cedar, which I'm super excited to try, that would be the third factor in this equation. And with the two Coldepacker rollers, I think that would make a huge difference in the final finished surface. My customers hire me because they want to take a rough and bumpy lawn and turn it into a smooth and absolutely beautiful masterpiece when I'm finished. So I think, yeah, starting with the cultivator to fluff the soil, bury the rocks, then come in with the power rake to polish and refine the surface, and then follow up with the primary cedar, I think that's the proper order and how this should be done. If there's anything else you guys want to see, I'm going to make efforts to make another video showing more aspects of the cultivator. And my hopes that in the near future, I'll also be able to get video with the primary cedar. I want to really thank you for taking the time to join us in this video today. And we'll see you in the next one.